Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. The topic of today is efficiency, which oddly enough is one of my favorite things to talk about. I view efficiency as being so thorough in the execution of a task that you get the best possible outcome while having the least amount of wasted resources. It's like a bag full of variables and it's my job to take all those factors, put them in the right order and come up with the best way to achieve the intended result. I see inefficiency all the time and it is hard for me to constantly see wastefulness, ineffectiveness, and poor results. Not to say I'm perfect because I'm not. For these reasons, I rely heavily on processes in life, tasks, projects, and communication. Now let's get into some methods that I use to get stuff done. Firstly, let's start off with timelining. I often find myself in projects in which I have deadlines to meet, which I'm sure you do too. So the first thing that I do is I set up artificial deadlines for myself. Let's say I have five days to write a paper on the Spanish Inquisition. In my mind, I'm going to tell myself and fully convince myself that I've got to get this project done in three days. The reason I do this is because one, it gives me a sense of urgency, and two, the thought of disappointing myself hurts considerably more than the thought of disappointing my professor. So with my artificial deadline in place, I get to work timelining each aspect of the project. Let's say researching takes three hours and I need to get five interesting topics. I'll budget two hours to get the bulk of my paper done and 10 minutes to write a conclusion. Finally, I'll give myself one hour to do any revisions. Now, somewhere in these next three days before my paper is due, I need to carve out six hours and 10 minutes, which should be easily doable. And the beauty of this is if you need more time, you still have two more days to get it done. Timelining your project makes your objectives clear. Another technique I use to get stuff done is association. There are certain habits and rituals that you find yourself doing without even thinking about it. Like going to the bathroom as soon as you come home from work checking your bank account while you pump gas, listening to podcasts while you go for a walk. Everybody's got their thing, but whether good or bad, I've got some tips to use those habits to your advantage. Tie a habit you want with a habit you already have. For example, I text all the time. Too much, way too much. And for a guy who hates being on his phone, this is an ironic problem. My wife tells me that I don't communicate with her like I used to before we were married. So here's what I did. I've got text wife on my calendar and I created shortcuts on my phone so that it makes it incredibly more efficient and easier to stay connected and to remember to text her. She loves that I send these things out regularly and she doesn't even care that it's scheduled. And instantly we have the conversation started in the middle of the day. She feels loved and considered and it was an easy adjustment for me because I'm already texting anyway. Now let's get to one of my favorite things to do. Batching is such a useful technique for efficiency. As the name implies, you batch like tasks together. Henry Ford in the early 1900s was a pioneer in batching by using the assembly line in his car factories. He divided up the process of putting a car together into dozens and dozens of steps, each one specializing in one part of the car. During that time, it took other companies up to 12 hours just to build one car. Henry Ford, got that time down to 90 minutes. And you can expedite your projects in a similar fashion. Batching tasks is batching fun. The more you batch, the quicker you're done. Ooh, that's good. Let's move on to QuickTime. And no, I'm not talking about your computer's default video player. I'm talking about a method that is time-based and not task-based. Parkinson's law states that the work you do expands to fill up the time that's allotted for the task. So if you have two hours to clean your bedroom, it's gonna take you two hours to do the job. So let's say you have only 15 minutes to clean the bedroom. Your mind and your actions are going to shift so that you can get as much done in that 15 minutes as you possibly can. I use this primarily on lower priority tasks, things that I don't want to do, but I have to do. House cleaning, laundry, folding clothes, grocery shopping. I don't want to do those things, but I have to. When I'm using the QuickTime method, I typically just accept the end result because getting the task done is more important than having the task done well. It's basically just a check mark on the list. And at the end of the day, the task is done and I have more time to dedicate to higher priority items. I hope this video was helpful. And if you're interested, I've got a video here of me doing a typical millionaire's routine for 24 hours. See you guys in the next video.